and welcome to Cooking with Tom. Well, today on the show, we are going to explain to you how to smoke fish right from the very first step, which is buying it from the store in frozen format. This one here is a uh, Pacific Wild Salmon. We also have a, uh, a whole steelhead trout. Now we have to brine these guys, and brining means that you're going to soak these guys in water that has salt in it and sugar in it. And you're gonna do that for usually about 24 hours, the day before you're gonna do the smoking. So uh, the first thing you wanna do is uh, take your fish out of the bag that uh, you bought it in and uh, you're going to rinse the fish. You have to rinse the outside of the fish and the cavity because you know when they, when they uh, clean these fish, they, they just gut them pretty quick and they don't do a very good job rinsing out the, the inside. So we're going to clean him up. Outside. And clean the inside as well. Clean the inside of that cavity. Now in order to brine your fish, you're going to need a container that is large enough to be able to handle the fish plus the, uh, the brine that uh, the fish will be soaking in. Okay, so let's make some brine up. Uh, you're going to have a mixture of one gallon of water to one cup of coarse salt, kosher salt, you can use table salt if you want, uh, preferably not, but uh, it's, only, it's only brining overnight, 24 hours, so it's not a big deal. If it were a longer time, you do not want to use an iodized salt, but because it is only 24 hours, if you have no coarse salt, no kosher salt, just use some table salt. So anyway, we have one gallon of water, like I said, we have one cup of salt, preferably coarse, kosher, it's called pickling salt and also one cup of brown sugar. If you uh, have only golden sugar, fine. If you only have white sugar, so be it. But you know, the recipe does call for kosher salt and brown sugar. So for every gallon of water, one cup of coarse salt, one cup of brown sugar, right? You're going to mix that up. You're going to get all the uh, sugar and salt into solution. You don't want any chunks. And then you're going to pour it over top of the fish until the fish are completely submerged. We're probably going to have to make a few gallons of this brine in order to uh, cover up all our fish. That's fine. Uh, the fish have now been covered with the brine solution and what we're going to do is put these into a refrigerator. After 24 hours we are going to uh, take the fish out of the brine solution, we're going to rinse them and uh, we're going to show you that in day two of this. So into the fridge we go. Well, hello, and it's day two of our smoking process. Hen Kurvitz has joined us on the set. Say hello, Hen. Hello, Hen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. So uh, I'm going to let Hen take it from here, but basically uh, he's going to take us through day two steps about uh, washing the brine off the fish, getting them onto the racks, getting the smoker set up, and uh, away we go. So Hen, take it from here. Mm -hmm. Well, what can I say? Uh, I'm an old friend of Camo's and we have done a lot of uh, projects together. Anyway, uh, this, today's project is a smoking of the fish. Geez, I know when I was going to be on this I would have gotten a haircut. But anyway, we have to take the uh, fish out of the brine and rinse it. Um, otherwise they'll end up too salty. So that, that's what a brine salmon looks like. So it's changed color from yesterday. 
thanks thanks to the priming. So I'm going to take take them out of the out of it and uh, rinse them in in cold water. And then what we'll do is we're going to put them in the uh, Bradley smoker racks, and we have to make sure that they do fit in here. Uh, and if not, if we have to knock off a piece of the tail or whatever so that it fits in, then so be it. And we can probably so one one each, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, we could probably put, put two if we don't have the room, and we can take off the tail because it's not like you're eating this part of the tail anyway. So we'll just keep oh, washing. That's for the cats. Isn't that's it? for the cats. That's that's for your aunt's cats. <laughs> <laughs> And it's too early in the morning, we're not drinking wine yet. No, <laughs> we're high on coffee. Okay, one more rinse and then we're, we're done. We're done with these. Oh! Good. Is that your finger? Yeah. <laughs> so, two rack fish. Fish number three. And you must have to throw right on there. So this is the steelhead trout. Normally we would, uh, if, if the trout were smaller, we would smoke them in just a one piece, just cleaned and cut it. But this was so large, so uh, what we've done, we've cut it up into three sections. Um, the front piece we halved and uh, filleted it. Leave the skin on because otherwise it'll, uh, it'll fall to pieces. Uh, but the uh, tail section, we're, we're going to smoke in one piece. There's no point in uh, filleting it. So, now we're ready for the smoking, and I'll turn this thing over to the smoking master. And master. Oh, All right. There we go. Well, I'm not a master, actually I learned from this guy. He's the master. Um, so what we have to do first is get the smoker preheated. Uh, and we're looking for a final fish temperature of uh, 145 to 150 internal. So we'll be putting a probe into the thickest part of the meat so that we know when it's done. Our smoker temperature is going to be 160 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus. We're using uh, an electrically heated smoker so we can control the temperature. And we're going to be using alder wood for uh, smoking. Salmon uh, usually tastes best using the alder wood. We have used other woods, apple and uh, as such, but uh, this time we will be using the alder wood for the smoking and uh, the steelhead trout as well. So The, uh, the alder wood gives a much uh, milder taste to it. Uh, as opposed to let's say cherry or apple, which uh, with, with a ten tender meat like uh, fish, um, alder wood we, we found. And that, anyway, that's the traditional uh, traditional wood that they use. Yeah, apple might be better for uh, ham or uh, that kind of meat or whatever. But uh, uh, hen is right there. You want something a little milder, so it's not as uh, heavy and perfumey on the on the fish. So let's go and check out the smoker. All right, welcome to the great outdoors. Uh, this is where you should have your smoker. If you have it indoors, your house is going to smell like smoke. So what we have here is an old 1951 or 1952 General Electric uh, refrigerator that we have gutted and uh, converted over to a, a full-time smoker, cold and hot smoking. The nice thing about a refrigerator cabinet is the walls are insulated already, obviously to keep the heat out, the cooled in, we're doing the reverse. We're trying to keep the heat in and the cold out, so we're trying to elevate the temperature of whatever we're smoking or cooking. So uh, you want to have a fridge or a cabinet that does not have any kind of plastic interior parts. Everything has to be steel or metal or aluminum, but there you go. So you're having a look at that smoker now as you can see we're preheating it all I'm using for the preheating is an electric frying pan electric skillet which I have hardwired meaning I've taken off the thermostat and I've just made it into a full-time high heat device uh, which is being controlled by a thermostatic device which has a temperature sensor it's a little bit complex you can buy an electric smoker today that does all this uh, you don't have to actually build your own I just did because I'm cheap so 
I've also put in rack units here so basically what you do is when you're so basically what you do is you can put your fish right onto the racks and slide them in you can control the uh, temperature of course and you can also control the amount of smoke that you blow into this thing uh, heavy smoke for some applications lighter smoke for others so uh, I'm not going to get too heavy into this because this is we're not uh, this is not a build a smoker video this is a how to smoke fish video nice thing to have as well is, uh, is a remote uh, reading um, display that tells you what the temperature is of a your smokehouse itself and B your uh, whatever you are smoking so we have something called a probe that will stick right into see that little guy there so that probe would stick right into your meat or your fish or whatever and tell you what the temperature is and it's one of those uh, indications so even though your smoker house is say 160 degrees your fish obviously when it first goes in was only going to be room temperature maybe 60 or 70 degrees so slowly you will see the second digit which is the uh, the fish or the meat temperature come up okay without further ado our uh, temperature of our smoker is up to where we want it preheated around 160 so what we're going to do now is get the fish onto the racks Okay, so we have our fish placed on our racks. Now what do you need to do? Close the door, get the temperature back up, and apply your smoke. What we have here is a smoke generator device. It's something that I built basically out of a piece of steel tube. It has a, an airline that comes in and through Venturi principle, uh, air injects into the smoker cabinet and as it's going in, it draws the smoke that is uh, created by our smoldering wood, draws the smoke into the cabinet and smokes your product. Now this device here really doesn't give off any heat. The cold smoke uh, that we require for cold smoking is created by this device. It also can be used for hot smoking, but the idea behind it is the cold Venturi air as it pulls the smoke in, it's cooling the smoke, so when it goes into the cabinet, it is cold smoke, roughly around 75, 80 degrees. The nice thing about that is you can smoke cheeses in here, or you can cold smoke salmon. Uh, we've even cold smoked bacon in here, uh, which you don't want to have hot smoke because the bacon will just drip away and turn to fat and create quite a mess in your smoker. So the nice thing about this guy is you just fill it up with wood, you turn on the air, you get some heat going underneath, which we'll do with a, uh, we're just going to use propane. Get it going until it starts to smolder, and then we put an end cap on it to restrict the airflow, because if there's too much airflow, the wood will just burn, and you'll get very minimal smoke. We want to create smoke, so you want to almost starve the flame of air in order to create a smoldering kind of fire in here. You don't really want an open flame going on. This will get really hot, by the way, and uh, this is patented. No, just kidding. So I stole it off the internet too, so. Okay, so we're filling this guy up with pieces of alder. Compliments of hen, this is from the farm, and uh, it's been seasoned now for a couple of years. You want it fairly dry. You know, If you're using the wet wood, it'll be really hard to keep the flame going. So we've uh, stocked the uh, cold smoke generator, or the smoke generator now, with our alder wood. We've turned on the air, <clears throat> so now the air is actually flowing through here and it's going to draw the smoke from the fire through and into the cabinet. See that? We're creating smoke. You have to do this for probably a good minute or so uh, to get a good fire going and then you'll probably have to come back once or twice as well. Give this a few taps to get the wood to settle closer 
the pieces to settle closer together and then you get a decent little uh, inferno going in here. Smoldering inferno. Okay. So now if you look at the telltale here, you can probably see the smoke coming out of my telltale and it's saying, hey, the cabinet is full of smoke because now it's coming out the side of the cabinet. And we're looking here, yes, we do have smoke as well. We have an exhaust pipe, and we'll call it that. And if you look up there, you can see that is uh, my eavesdrop down, down pipe that if you're looking at the hose there that goes to the top of the smoker unit. And you can see that I have the ability to turn the smoke uh, or whatever is leaving the cabinet up or down. I find that about uh, a half choked or slightly more uh, is just about perfect for allowing the smoke to flow through. You don't want stale smoke. In other words, the smoke comes through, does its job and then leaves. You don't want it to just keep building up inside because then you end up with a kind of a creosote um, or stuff on your on your product you don't want that so the smoke comes goes through the cabinet heads on its way let's have a look inside now okay you see that wow looking good so you see the smoke all pouring out the bottom right there that's what it's supposed to be doing generating our smoke good stuff it's a background music like smoke gets in your eyes <laughs> Smoke is getting in my eyes. <laughs> Excellent. Temperature's good. We're about halfway into the smoking process, and we'll just do a quick check to see how they're progressing. There we go. Now you can see that they're kind of slowly turning what eventually should be a nice golden color, mainly thanks to the um, sugar and the brine. We have the uh, salmon on top and the, uh, the trout on the on the bottom. Oh, I think it's doing well. Good, excellent. So that's about an hour in. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. So we're we're freaking like about two hours, two and a half hours. Something yeah, like. probably close to that. Yeah, so we'll, <laughs> we'll carry on. We'll carry on. Good. So here we are. It's about. Well, three hours later, and the um, indicator showed the fish was up to 150 degrees, so we turned the heat off about half an hour ago, and just let the uh, fish steep in the uh, in the smoke. So we'll open the door and see what comes out of it. Ah, uh, kitty! Wow! So here we go. That's looking nice. Yeah. So here we have the. Uh, Two salmon, oh, oh. Yeah, beautiful brown color on them, or yeah, yellowish, so uh, that's, that's what we're looking for. And here we have a piece of the uh, steelhead trout, the real piece. And the two fillets, boy, do they ever look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Very, Gorgeous. Very, very nice. Good job. Yeah. Good job, Mr. Smoker. Yeah, that worked out just fine. That All right. Beautiful. So, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you might prepare or uh, present this kind of fish, Hen? Uh, well, I, I think the the fish is really a delicacy, and and you know it's it's expensive enough. And there's enough work involved in smoking it, so. Uh, you really don't look at it as a main course when you're eating it. So you don't put that on a table with mashed potatoes and, and turnips. So normally the way we would eat it is a, along with some maybe some fresh uh, baguettes, a glass or two of aqua vita or vodka. And it's, it's more, more for snacking as a as delicacy. Now what, what one can do, sometimes they tend to be a little on the dry side, uh, we make up a mix of maybe sour cream and dill with a bit of lemon juice in it and garlic if you wish and then you can dip them in the sauce or, or put this put a piece of fish on the uh, on the baguette and put a dab of sauce on top so uh, it, it's a very social type of food 
So you sit and drink and talk and, and, and eat fish. So uh, here we go. And I think it's been a very successful smoker again, hasn't it? It's been a wonderful day yeah. yet again. Smoking yeah. with Hen and Tamo here at uh, at the Innisfil uh, the ranch. And uh, let's do it all again next week. We'll do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, here's the final test. Cut off a little, little piece of it. Isn't that nice? It's still hot, so it's, it's a bit crumbly. So as the uh, Scandinavians would say, skull. Mmm, beautiful. To your health.